Twitter pod in here and get Discord posted. All right. Hello, everyone. This is Chris Hingerson, and it is. It's not May anymore. It's June 1st, June, and this is the June 1st Text Quest Dev Stream. So, uh, today we're going to be working on combat animation stuff again. Um, we're going to be switching gears a bit and switching over to the to another uh, combat animation. Um, I haven't quite finished up my Phase 2... Um, I haven't quite finished up my Phase 2 segment left yet. I'm getting there, but we're not all the way done yet. Interesting. Did it? Huh. Maybe it did. Okay, apparently a close timeline. Weird. Um, <clears throat> Hello, Dusted Ham. Welcome back. How are you doing today? Alright, so uh, I guess I should probably start by saying technically this falls under art. I really should have an animation tab because this is kind of more animation than art, in my opinion. But, I mean, not that animation isn't art, but you get the idea. Uh, anyway, so uh, we're going to go ahead and switch to, oh, I don't need to have that preview on, uh, to the segment right animations, because those will be, I think, a little bit shorter than segment two's were. Um, segment two's animations were all pretty long, um, despite the fact that they only last, let's see, what's that, five seconds? <laughs> um there is a, fail am or a fair amount of uh, effort that goes into these. Um, in contrast, segment right is probably going to have comparable designs, but it's actually going to have a lot less animation in the sense of moving characters around. Um, a lot more of the a lot more of the animation in segment right is going to be actually with the camera <laughs> um, to make things kind of feel a little bit more snappy. So, not feeling 100%, but I'm trying to work through it. Ah, that, that's rough. It's always it's always rough whenever you, uh, you get in that mood. Um, hopefully, you can kind of bounce back a bit, though. Uh, I'm doing doing all right. Um, I am not having a fun time with all this combat animation stuff. <laughs> um, I just it's a huge time sink to do all this, and I'm so particular with everything that it takes me forever to make it look good, or at the very least acceptable to me. Um, so there's definitely a lot of work that's going to be tough on this animation system just because of all the combat, uh, or all the animation. Anyway, so we're going to go ahead and get started with um, segment two right, which uh, is, so basically uh, phase two has two separate paths you can take. You can either go left, um, which has uh, the animation that we were working on, where the player kind of like scrub through this. The player comes in, slides under the troll, and then if they succeed, what will end up happening is the player will right themselves. The camera will look up this way. We'll see the uh, player tackle the troll. Uh, you'll have one more prompt that says takedown. Uh, if you manage to type that in, then the player will successfully grab the troll and then just uh, take them down to the ground, causing damage. Uh, then they will reset. Uh, if the player fails, they will. Actually, I'm going to keep that one a surprise because it's one of the ones that I'm really going to like doing, and it will secret it will prove that I'm secretly five years old. Um, so I'm just going to keep that animation under wraps until I can finish it up. Um, and the one that we're going to do here is well, you can kind of see my comments uh, on. Oh, that's the wrong one. Uh, you can see my comments here for what my plan is. Uh, see, yeah, but you can look forward to it looking really good when it's done. Yeah, looking really good, assuming that I can. Uh, bear to spend all that time in the curve sheet and just fine-tuning all those curves, which I probably won't enjoy doing, but I will be happy with the end result once I do do it. Um, in any case, so this this right uh, path is going to be a little bit more, a little bit faster and a little bit more over the top. I, they're all kind of over the top, actually. Um, so my plan here is that the player will, or the hero will rush in. Uh, the troll will rear its head back and then swing it forward. If the player manages to type dodge, um, then they will kind of just like spin around here. I'm kind of doing this with the camera. Uh, and then land here behind the troll. They'll basically be standing right behind them. Uh, by the time the troll starts to right itself, we'll have the camera be about here. 
so you can kind of see everything. And then we'll just have the player... Uh, well, actually, you know what? Mm. I guess I can't really put the camera there now that I think about it. If they're lined up perfectly, um, one behind the other, I won't. Be, you won't be able to see them very well. So that means I have to do what I was originally going to do, I guess, which is I need to have the camera do this so the camera will be behind them. And then when the player... Uh, Basically, after the player successfully dodges, the next action is suplex. Uh, so when the player suplexes them, I was planning on having the camera rotate along with the troll so that it would end up upside down like this. And then we'll have it go backwards and rotate. Wow, that's really hard to navigate when it's upside down like that. Ugh. Yeah, it's super weird. All of my uh, left and right movements were inverted. Um, anyway. So that's kind of the gist of what we're going to do here. Um, the failures for these are actually going to be pretty easy. Uh, if the player fails uh, when rushing at the troll, the troll will just headbutt them, and the player will just immediately, boom, kind of like uh, slam into the ground uh, on their back, and then they'll just hop up and reset. Uh, if they fail on the suplex, I haven't quite figured out what I want to do, but it's probably going to be something similar to um, another another thing, which is something I don't want to reveal yet. So. Uh, because, again, I'm secretly five sometimes. So let's go ahead and get started animating. Um, and both both segment left and right do start from the same point, which is uh, we have our initial lead into this phase. About this point, we get presented our choices. Do we want to go left or right? Uh, if we choose left, we'll do the takedown. If we do choose right, we're going to do the suplex. So from here, uh, we are going to actually handle our uh, camera and our movements. So. A little awkward because essentially we're going to be resetting the camera, which I'm not always a huge fan of. Um, actually, you know what? No, we might be able to get away with some camera trickery. Um, I really wish I had made this hallway much bigger. It's so confined, so my camera can't really do much here. Um, <clears throat> anyway, so we are going to... Let's see here. Come over to here. Actually, I'm going to put it right come over to here. 2, we're going to create a subfolder here, uh, we're going to say segment 01, which I believe is just this, and then these are all segment 2's, so create folder, segment 02, I'm going to call this left, actually, left, that's all of these. Folder. Segment zero 02 right. Are you doing custom animations for every fight? Yes, I am. There, I mean, admittedly, there is some amount of overlap in the sense that some animation can be saved, but the bulk of this is pretty, pretty unique each fight, which is why it's going to be a bit of an arduous task. Um, but the trade-off for that is that it will make each fight feel much more interesting and much more unique. Um, so the downside to that is obviously that it's a lot of animation work that's on my head, um, which is a bit of a time sink, but um, I think if I can get kind of a good rhythm going, it won't be so unbearable. Um, it's really kind of awkward right now because I'm working on the systems at the same time. Well, actually, the systems themselves are kind of already done. Um, I guess they're not 100% finished. They're probably like 80% there. Um, but yeah, it, it is it is basically just a lot of animation work, um, which I probably was stupid to do, but at the same time, there wasn't really a great alternative because the current combat system is functional, as I've said multiple times. Like, that's all I can really say. Combat, troll... I gotta, <laughs> I gotta shorten these names. So we're gonna say troll phase two, right? A. I guess. Um. Okay. So we're gonna go ahead and come back up to here. We're gonna put this in right here. 
And now we need to get our actual camera movements. Um, so we're going to need what is our VCAM? Oh, that's oh right. Um, so this is what this looks like. Um, I would like to use these cameras, and I'm kind of using it. You can tell from uh, the if we scrub the uh, left one, you can see that we fade to like a low end camera, which is what this angle was for the right side. Um, essentially, we'd be doing the opposite of this, uh, and we would have this show up on the left. But admittedly, I'm not sure if I want to do that because, like I said, it's kind of awkward. Plus, if I did that here, it would be crossing the line of action, which you don't want to do. Um, if, you've, if, you're not, if you're not familiar with film theory, there are a couple of rules, quote-unquote, well, I guess they're more like guidelines. Um, that you don't want to break in cinematography. One of them is called crossing the line of action. Um, and admittedly, that is usually used for cuts more than single shots, which is what we all we do. We don't really do cuts. Um, at least not in this fight. I doubt I will ever really do cuts, except, well, I could see it in a few very rare instances. Um, but you don't generally want to go across an invisible line uh, that is, that marks basically 180 degrees that you can freely move the camera. Uh, if you do go across that line, you risk making the viewer confused because suddenly their brain has to remember where everything was spatially um, in the room, not in relation to what they're looking at. Uh, so if you cross that 180 degree line uh, of action, you need to be careful. Um, so I would, I would prefer to avoid that if I can, um, just to keep things visually simple. Uh, so we will probably not actually use this angle here. Um, and this one, I don't even know what it does. Oops. It's just on the side, which is yeah, useful, but not really because of all the other characters. Um, which kind of sucks, because I was originally going to do like a uh, side shot of the suplex where we just increase the Dutch angle as the troll gets lifted over, and then we would just spiral back. But it's... It's not terrible for us to just have it vertically rotate, or I guess rotate along its x-axis, which is not really vertical. It would be technically removing vertically. Yeah, anyway. Um, okay, so segment two right. Uh, we need to do a couple of things here. Uh, I'm going to add some track groups. Uh, let's pull this over here so that you can see what I'm doing to start. Um, so we're going to call these cameras. Um, this will have a track, we're going to put in camera here, we're going to need a Cinemachine shot clip, and then we're going to need another Cinemachine shot clip. Um, that is probably going to be this, and segment one ends with segment one camera, which is there, which is what this first camera needs to be. We're going to set its duration to one, probably it could be two. So we want to have this blend happening here for our camera. Um, when we do that, I do need to have a text quest combat playable track that's going to set Cinemachine camera clip. Uh, this is a custom clip that I have written to basically uh, hard set what the active camera is on uh, on Cinemachine because for some reason the Cinemachine camera. Uh, clips do not actually set what camera is the priority camera. They just make the camera that's targeted the priority camera for the duration of the clip. But then it goes back to whatever camera is defaulted to, uh, which can be a little wonky. I don't really know why they set it up like that, but they did. So, yeah. Um, any case, so let's go ahead. And the next thing we want to do is set up. Let's see, we're going to need groups for characters characters we need a track group for hero track group for troll okay this is going to need an animation track as well as this fortunately there's not a ton that actually needs to happen here um, as I said before, this, this initial animation is actually going to be pretty simple in the sense that we're just going to go from here 
to probably about here, camera wise. And, ah, it just kind of sucks because I would like to actually follow the action. Um, mm, I don't know about that. Let me think. So the, well, let's focus on this first. I'm thinking in all the segments that I'm going to have to create. So first things first, uh, we want our hero parent in here. We want our troll parent down here. Um, we are just going to set up, uh, let's go to troll parent. What different types do I have here? So I kind of could use that. That would probably be fine. I selected a label, give it a second. This is one of the things that I don't like about TextMesh Pro, and I think it still does this in 2018, um, but when you initially select a label for TextMesh Pro, it loads a bunch of stuff from memory into resources. That's why I was hanging there. I couldn't move anything uh, because it has to load a bunch of resources for uh, the fonts, which is a little jarring and a little frustrating, but I understand why that's the case. Uh, it just kind of sucks. In any case, so... Uh, we're going to do some rotation on the O, R, and T, which means that we need to parent them. I don't want to necessarily handle it like this, though. Um, thinking, thinking, thinking. I will probably create a new duplicate thing here. Let's turn you on. Cool. You work. Uh, we're going to call this not throw stomped hero, but headbutt, put you up here, and I guess it doesn't really matter. Um, all right, and all of these are parented pretty much how I need them to be. Um, so T is parented to R, which is parented to O. And all we're really going to do here is we're just going to rotate this O value. Um, but before we can do any of that, we need to close this and go down to do, 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 down to the right. Okay, I'm going to try that try to get this to make it so that you guys can see everything. Um, so first things first, the hero doesn't actually need to manage its state, but the troll does. So we're going to add uh, Sleepy Owl, Text Force Combat, Combat Playable Track. We're going to say, da, 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 where are you? Combat Animation State. Uh, we're going to select our, oh man. To me, it's this one. Oh, also, I messed up anyway. But dang, really? They weren't in order? Fine. All right, so we're going to come up here to the model. Uh, now I'm going to move this back over. And we're going to add one more thing. Uh, we're going to call this headbutt. Uh, which I guess actually. Actually, does headbutt have two T's or just one? I think it's just one, right? Nope, it's two. Okay. I can't spell. It is boot. There we go. Now uh, let's go ahead and come back here to our 32 right. I'm going to set our combat animation to headbutt. Uh, we are going to go ahead and start animating. And for that, I'm going to have to have this off to the side so that I can a little bit easier. Um, so we're going to stay. All we really care about is the O, R, and T. We don't really care about anything else. Uh, so I'm going to need to, I don't even need to handle position. I just need to do rotation. How nice is that? Set you to zero to start. Um, and let's go ahead and show those curves. We're going to go to um, I'm assuming that right about here we're probably going to do this as well. So let's come back here to O. Set you to 1 and then 0 again. Uh, I guess before I animate the troll, I should probably animate the player moving. So we're going to have the player start here. So I need to 
that's a okay. And by the time we get to here, we probably want to be about here. Um, <clears throat> so once we do that, hmm. no, so I don't actually want, hold on, let me get rid of these keyframes, um, so I don't actually want the player to slow down here, I want it to be a constant motion, so I'm going to straight up have it be here. Right about there is how long it's going to take for this to be a thing. Okay. So that means it's going to look like this, kind of, except we need to move our camera. Um, so let's go ahead and stop animating the player real quick. We're going to move our camera. Uh, so we're going to need to go from VCAM segment to side. Um, I probably, let's go ahead solo this so I can see everything while I'm moving it. Um, I am a little torn, but we need to basically be able to swing in this arc for the most part for our camera shots. So if the player is charging, we probably want something more like this. not bad. <laughs> the touch angle was not what I was intending. Um, actually, it might be better for me to have a straight shot with a touch angle on it. Hmm. And there we go. And I'm trying to see if I'm... I do have rotation still. Um, let's go ahead and zero you out. There we go. And then we could use a Dutch angle if we really wanted to. That makes more sense. Okay. <clears throat> so we're going to go ahead and rotate this to about here. Um, I'm uh, not sure about that. We're going to move this, move this back. Move this. I'm going to get rid of that light uh, by disabling it. Uh, I will do that when I activate this cutscene. And then I... Crap, I can't do that because I need... Yeah, that's a problem. So... Placement of camera is tripping me up here. So we go from this position. We go from about here. We want to swing up, I want to say, to like right about here. So like there. Oh, that's interesting. I have no idea what that is. Um, oh, it's the gizmo. Ha! <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, that works pretty well, I think. And then that's clear enough to showcase that, although I probably should... I probably should move forward just a smidge. And try for... like that. So that means that our blend's going to look like this. Yep, that's good. I like that. 
Okay. And for the next thing, uh, we need to set up our actual animation real quick for the troll. So we're going to go to here. I'm actually going to go ahead and right click the key and we'll set this time to one. Okay, so right about here, we're going to have the troll wind up their attack. Go ahead and, well, mm, mm. that is, mm. I don't want to say, <laughs> so the original word that I was going to have typed here is dodge, which is pretty simple. I kind of wonder if I should make it something longer to make it. To, to something like dodge headbutt. Um, I could also use a very esoteric word like pirouette because you're technically going to spin around him. Um, I... Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> it would probably be better for word variety to have the word pirouette. Except I have no idea how to spell that. I knew the first four letters, but that is about it. Hmm. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll use pirouette. That's a interesting enough word, I feel, and it's a fun word. So uh, let's go ahead and select this back. Uh, we are going to, jeez, ah, I don't, so by the end of this move, I kind of want us to be at a visible point, which means that I probably need to do this real quick. Hold on. Let's set this to a duration of 1.5. And then we are going to maybe. Oh, okay, sure, whatever. Um, <clears throat> so from here, it's going to take about 1.5 seconds for the camera movement to happen. And then during that time, our hero will come into view. We will be able to type pirouette, I think, in 4.5 seconds. That is, I think, long enough, but it might need to be extended to 5 seconds case fine um so uh, i don't want to have the troll last too, too long like it needs to be pretty pretty quick uh, so let's go ahead and create our keys we're going to make this 150 okay so about here we're going to have our troll rear its head back so let's go ahead and do that And by the time it's done at 300, we need to be basically right there. Or mm, right there, I guess. Yeah, that gives me time to work. So essentially we have this. This is what our animation will look like. That is super slow. <laughs> okay. Also, fun fact, although it looks like it's fine. Um, this is a thing. Of course, it's going from a positive to a negative, which I guess is what it was doing. So that kind of makes sense. I'm actually glad that it's doing it that way. Usually when it crosses the line like that, it's super annoying and I don't for it to be like that, but it's nice that it's actually intentional enough. It evaluated it that way this time. 
Um, so we're going to actually rotate this back one more. And we need to set the curve here to be much more anticipated, right? Like I want it to get to here. So let's see what this looks like in motion. It's too slow. Um, mm. And to think about how to how this actually functions in real life. So let's see here. We're gonna lean back and then head up, which needs to be like slow and then fast all at once. So this is not going to work. I actually want this to be reversed. Like this, maybe. Hmm. So the problem is that I need it to like, I need it to accelerate, but the problem is that it, I can't, uh, yeah, like that's clearly not right. Um, let's turn off our, let's turn the loop off first. Yeah, turn that off. Um, so this is the motion. Lean back. Curve is way too slow. Um, so I think we want it to be a little more accelerated. Right? Do we really do that with this? No, that's just so slow. Um, maybe it's because the duration is just too long. Uh, okay, fine. So I'm going to move all of these keyframes. Let's see. Uh, I'll give you that command to do. So something like this. I just I feel like I should have more of a lead in. Um, to 210, or something more like this. Thanks, timeline. I love it when it lags like that. <laughs> Makes the preview functionality completely worthless. Um, we're doing better there. It still needs to come in hot, though. So something like this. Lean back and then slam. Or it just, it still is taking too long. So half a second is too long. Let's go for a quarter of a second. Um, let's drag these. Move them up to there. So this is the motion. That's better. Okay, um, <laughs> so with that, um, that's basically all we really needed to do for the start of this. Oh, wait, I do need to get the combat in there. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do this. We're going to say track group, combat. Uh, we're going to say route slash combat, attack uh, section, track. Say we want a defense section. That comes right about here. Uh, let's see here. So damage amount is zero. Type is single. Fail on an action is true. Fail priority of zero is fine. Um, yeah, all follow is fine. Follow the main camera. Fade and duration. Do the alpha. Those are all fine. Um, Forget where they give me a second. I always forget where combat attack level is. And 
I can't select it from the freaking field here for some reason. Uh, so we have one action here. It is called um, pirouette, right? So pirouette. Forgot the U. <laughs> My only concern about pirouette is that kids might have trouble typing it. Hell, adults might have trouble typing it. It's a French word. Um, so it might have to change at a later date, but if that's the case, it's as simple as changing that string, so I'm not too worried about it. I'm just kind of a little sad that that's the case. Uh, we're going to parent the spawn, I guess. Uh, we don't need to worry about that because this will force it to... So, all right. Um, so we're going to go ahead and say pirouette. We need a spawn point. Uh, so at this point, we're talking about there. Let's go ahead and, you know, it would probably be good for me to have a debug on this thing. You know, now that I'm thinking about this, I probably could remake this to not use you, GUI. Um, but that's not really. No, no, I couldn't because image. I need that border. Uh, okay, so, and I need this bright side. Never mind. Um, so we're going to go ahead and I'm just going to put a transform here. We're going to call this attack. Point, and I'm just going to drag this combat attack label right into it. Um, are you disabled? Ah. Okay. Uh, so, with this, I can now kind of move this around. Um, we're going to go ahead and select segment to the right. We're going to lock this. Uh, we're going to put it there. Attack point needs to be. Like right about there ish. You know, I don't actually remember if this draws on top of them at all times. It does. How nice. Although it's super weird that it like draws. Oh, that's interesting. Hmm. I guess that makes sense, but I would have not thought that was possible. Okay. Uh. This is a very rare sight, but I have a label that will always draw on top of characters being drawn under characters as long as those characters are drawn above geometry that sorts above the label, which is very interesting. I've never seen that before. So that's kind of a cool possible approach for some special effect at a point later in my life. Uh, so I'm going to say... I don't know. Um, Here-ish? I want to say it might need to be a little bit pirouette, I guess. Let's go ahead and type that in. This is our label. So, pirouette. Uh, we need to rotate 180 degrees. Yeah, that looks pretty good, I think. Okay, um, so we're going to have that be our attack point. Go ahead and select this. On transform. Cool. So that's pretty much all that is. Um, that's all we really needed to do. Uh, we need to set up our separate timelines, of course, but for the most part, that's this timeline. Um, not a lot of action in the setup. Uh, okay. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this off because I don't think we're going to use it. Uh, segment two side. So that's segment two. Uh, we're going to go ahead and say create uh, video playable director. We're going to call this segment 03, right? 
Okay, and for this, this is going to be our success. So assuming that it works. Create timeline. I'm going to call this one control phase zero three. Right. That. Uh, we'll make sure that's not there, I think. Okay. So in one here, our success timeline is now going to be here. And now we can go over to. Oh, before I do anything else, um, I should scrub all the way so that we have everything in their correct positions. Oh, excuse me. Yawning. Okay. Uh, we're going to lock this up real quick, and I'm going to copy hero parent's position because it needs to start there. All right. We're going to come back over here to segment three to the right. We're going to unlock this. Show you what I'm doing. So we're going to add a track group. We're going to call this cameras. We're going to add another track group. We're going to call this characters. Subtract group called hero. We're going to get another one for the control. Hmm. Hmm. I'm trying to think. how I want to handle suplex because I really do like I mean I like the action of the suplex but I kind of want to make the interaction more interesting than just typing the word suplex um, I suppose I could like have the individual letters come on screen in, in sequence so it's like S-U-P-L-E-X suplex um I kind of like that, uh, but well, hmm. I'm trying to think about how I want to handle this. Mm. Okay, I think I know how I want to handle this. Hmm. Okay, I think I got it. I'm going to add an animation track. I'm going to have our hero parent start recording. I'm going to put this off to the side. Paste our values here. Okay, we can stop. That real quick. I'm going to add another animation track for our troll parent. Uh, let's go ahead and start animating that. Oh, before I do though, I should probably select this. Let's go back to our default positions. So O is rotated negative 30 degrees, and that's all it's doing. Cool. Um, so we're going to come back over to here. Turn this off. Turn this on. We're gonna is at negative 30 right there so that's our starting positions for these guys um, and from here we need to do a quick 360 rotation around and to the back um, of the uh, troll and before we do that we're gonna go ahead and add this animation track with our brain Scale combat playable track with set sim machine camera clip. Add sim machine shot clip. Add another one. Okay. And the shot to start is going to be this side one. And we're going to go ahead and say sim machine. I guess I can just duplicate it on the user. We're going to duplicate this. We're going to put this down here. Here. There we go. 
this. So it's kind of meant to be more like here-ish. Hmm. No, there's too much white space over here and the action's on the right. That's better. Uh, so that means, let's go ahead and shorten that. So this is what things would look like. So we move with a pirouette, ideally. Okay. So here is where things will get a little wonky. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and record the hero. I want that good. Uh, we're going to move the hero parent. So we're going to ultimately end up rotated facing the other direction. So we're going to do that. And then we're going to be right about here. I'm actually going to be, like, hugging him. Um, okay, and then from here... <laughs> um, we need to do some fancy work to get our rotation going the way that I want. Um, because this, at 90, should probably actually be... That plus 360. Oh no, you're clamping it. Boo. Boo on you, sir. Ah, great. Okay, so I have to do this the hard way. Um, we're going to stop recording. I'm going to hit F here. Uh, we're going to go into rotation. I want rotation Y specifically. Uh, with this key, a value of, I guess, apparently negative 180 which I will then subtract 360 from. Okay. So that means that this is what it should look like. Rotate, rotate, and position. Okay, so now all we gotta do is move the position X. Right? Yes. Um, which is an easier feat, or easier said than done. Um, all right, so we're going to go from there to um, this is where things get super awkward. Uh, so I want this curve all the way down here. I want this next curve to meet it. So we're going to... What the frig? Okay, so that's a, a bit too extreme. Trying to focus up on this. Um, actually, hold on. There we go. So we basically want to spin it around. That only works because he's forced to draw above it. That's hilarious. Uh, so we need to give it a little bit more give. Um, let's go for something like this. That works pretty well. I still feel like I'm really close to it, and in fact, I'm it just feels like I'm drawing on top of it, which I am to a certain extent, but I think that works pretty well. Let's see what that looks like in motion. That's actually really nice. That is a really good camera move and a really good spin.
work with me. Why are you taking so long? Oh, because there's that one stack. So spin and position. Nice. Okay, so with that, we're going to need to um, change how my labels come in. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to collapse this. We're going to go into combat. And then we're going to say add combat uh, attack section track. So we're going to go ahead and grab this. Uh, we're going to grab our combat. We're going to say add offense section clip. Uh, I'm going to drag this off to the side. There is no good way for me to do a freaking timeline thing uh, on, on, on air. There's just not a good setup for this. It takes up so much screen real estate. And I need these two things for me to control everything. So I need both windows. Um, it really sucks. Uh, anyway, so we're going to select this. Uh, we have our combat attack label. We have... So this is where things are going to get interesting. We have one section each. S. Except I want these to come in in sequence. Um, so I don't think this is actually the first time that I've done this with this system. I did this with. Oh yeah, I totally did this with the test case. Um, so we're pretty much gonna do a bunch of weird stuff here. Um, possible actions the player can take. I hate that this does this, by the way, um, because so this hover right here, possible actions the player can take. That is not the tooltip for that field. Apparently, exposed property references just do that, which is of course what they do. Um, anywho, so with that I'm going to go ahead and say I'm trying to think about how I want to handle this. Um, oh man, it would just work so much easier if this was sideways, but I I think I can get this to work. Um, so it's going to be uh, letters spelling out suplex. So that's six letters, I believe, S-U-P-L-E-X. Yep. Uh, and they're going to be arranged in an arc. So it's just going to say, like, S-U-P-L-E-X. So I'm going to need attack positions for all of those things. Um, so we're going to go ahead and set up attack positions. Okay, we're going to go ahead and make a new one. We're going to drag in combat attack label. We're going to call this one uh, S. Okay, we'll have our label just say S. So we want this to be somewhere around here. Drop it in. Oh man, uh, but it gets difficult because I need them to appear in sequence and they have to be typed in sequence. which complicates things. Previously, the only sequence that I did, all the letters disappeared immediately after they were typed. These ones I want to actually stay on screen um, because I want them to you know, actually spell out suplex. So that complicates things a lot, actually. Yes idea got an idea will that work yes 
guess it will. It should. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so. Combat attack labels individually listen for their, um, if you've typed the correct word or not, but I could make a combat attack label group, which will basically force them to behave, even if they're separate labels, to behave as one big label. Basically the same thing as a, co as a toggle group. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and say combat attack label. Combat attack label group. For the time being, I am going to turn this off, I guess. Okay. So the combat attack label group is kind of going to be. Well, it's going to have some functionality of the individual labels, I guess. Um, so we're going to say combat attack label group. <sighs> I'm thinking through some stuff. Um, yeah, that makes sense. Um, okay. So... <clears throat> We have combat attack label, and actually I need to go to, before I do anything else, I know I can collapse a bunch of stuff, but I don't really need to right now. Okay. Um, so I need to go to attack section clicks. No, attack section behavior. So I believe attack section behavior is the brains of evaluating if you're typing a specific label or not. Um, so I need to update it a little bit to handle uh, attack label groups. Woof, if it lets me. Okay. Uh, So what we want to do is, let's see, we replay with type equals single label press start attack. Uh, this is for our spawn point, right? We want pair frame. Uh, da, 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 da. Yes, here we are. Labels of I that starts with K. Um, so essentially what we want to do is if we have a group that's assigned, then we don't want to do this for loop. Instead, we want to check. Um, so actually, I guess if it'll be here. Uh, so I'll need to come up to here, and we're going to say label prefab, let's go back to null, um, and then we're going to say public combat attack label group, label group, equal to null. So we're going to come all the way down here again. And we need to say put enemies down. I guess this is all correct. Oh man, uh, this gets so much more complicated. The labels, uh, the labels. Let's go with labels. Oh, that should still work. All right. So here we're gonna say. <clears throat> If label group is not equal to null, or actually we'll just go ahead and say if it is equal to null. So 
So if that's null, we want to do this logic. Else. And we're going to go ahead and come back to tackle group. Uh, this is going to be a text quest dot combat. Okay. Uh, this is, I guess, going to be a mono behavior. That's fine. <clears throat> and then we need to basically uh, have a running list of those labels. So system dot collections dot generic. Uh, we're going to say um, private list combat attack label. Uh, we'll call this labels. It's new. Common attack new. Um, okay. Then we're going to have public void add label. Uh, it's going to take a combat attack. Okay, and here is where things get messy. Um, well, not yet. We're going to do public void clear labels. All that does is just say labels. Oh, wow, can't even spell labels. Labels dot clear. Pretty simple there. Um, so the next thing we have to do, though, is we basically need to listen for those individual labels to be marked complete and then have the um, have the combat attack label group send out an event when it's complete. Bleh. Um, so that really complicates things. Uh, yes, it does. Yes, it does. Um, trying to think about how to handle this. Uh, we are probably going to need to use so attack event, which is of course that. Uh, mm, mm. Attack skipped, backspaced. That's fine-ish, I guess. Oh, man. Cool. Sure, I want to have all of these things. Um, actually, is input failed? Invoked. It is. Oh, goodness. I forgot how complicated I made this logic. There's a lot that it has to handle. So... <laughs> I can probably, for the most part, hook into all of this, I think. So the reason that I have to have combat attack label group manage this is because if we simply looked through all of the labels that existed and tried to grab whichever one starts with the letter you typed, it's possible that I could type, like, X. And if... And it would, it would fill in the X of suplex, um, but not the word in order. Um, hmm. And that's the problem. Uh, so how do I want to handle this? Uh, but, but, All right, um, let's try to do this in as straightforward a way as possible. Um, so in addition to labels, we're going to need private int typed index is equal to zero. Actually, it's going to be equal to negative one to start. Um, so this is index for the most recent, not the most recently typed letter, 
last typed letter. Okay. Um, okay. Um, and essentially, what we're going to need to do is uh, we want to set our current attack, we want to check input, we want to check input here. So that's actually not too hard. Um, we basically just need to call check input on the combat attack label group, which we'll call check input on its current attack, I guess. So we're going to say public void check but string input. I believe that's what we need. Yes. Um, and then we can simply say um, if typed index is greater than or equal to zero, we're going to do something. Well, no, how about this? If it's less than zero, less than or equal to zero, just check the first letter, otherwise we'll check whatever letter it is, I guess. Which I guess means that we could probably just set this to zero, actually, now that I think about it. So let's just go ahead and say, um, so we're going to say labels at index, oh, sorry, uh, typed index dot check input. Put. And then I, of course, need to set up um, events. Let's go ahead and go back here. I'm actually kind of wondering, prepare frame. There is a callback, I believe. Attack began. I'm assuming these are all assigned final references. And then you spawn them and behave this way. Yeah. Okay, um, thinking, thinking, thinking. Uh, I suppose we're basically going to have to just do this. that because attack event is always annoying to look at because it doesn't really tell you much about it. Okay, well that tells me a bunch of asynchronous ones. We're not going to do that. I'm going to grab this and we're going to put this up at the top here. And I suppose I don't want this to be attack label. It should be attack label group. Yes? Also make this an SOS model behavior. Um, okay, so this should probably do that. What is the input failed one get used at? Why am I not against this? It's not. It's just it's invoked, but it's never used. Okay. Okay. That's that's fine. Um, for no references. Text skipped. So I don't really know. I should probably comment these. Fired when the label starts. Typed. Fired when the label starts.
Um, save. That just happened. Sorry, Windows. I don't know what happened there, but sure. Um, so. I need to basically check input, and then I have to figure out if they are being typed. Um, okay. Um, wow. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. Cool. So I need to... Um, Um, what's particularly infuriating about all of this is that I can't really test it until the animations are done, which sucks. Uh, label dot on attack began plus equals, and we're just gonna tab here to fill this in. Um, all right, and what we're gonna do here is on attack. We don't actually care about on attack. And um, we do care about on attack finished. Well, mm. yeah, okay. Um, so we're going to say on attack finished. And of course, I can't. equals on attack complete weird um, huh, apparently renaming it really doesn't like that I name it oh right because of the events um, right 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 um, Let's go ahead and rename this. Um, this is actually something that I've been meaning to kind of do for a while in my code, um, but I don't really like using on in events. It's what I did before as a convention, but I kind of feel like that's not a good way of handling it. Shoot. Because to do this, we have something called attack skip. No, no. Okay. How about attack backspace? There we are. Nope. How interesting. Is attack complete the one that caused the problem? I guess I can rearrange that to be complete attack. Let's rename this to complete attack. Okay, and then I can rename this to just attack complete. Okay, let's go all the way back up here. So those are all working. Uh, we're going to go ahead and come back over to here and do the same thing. Uh, rename this. Rename this. Which actually I can probably just backspace because I don't need those in quotes right now. Um, I don't think we need to worry about input failed at all. Um, I, I'm not even, even sure if I really want to handle backspacing, but I probably should. So uh, we're going to go ahead and say check 
input. Um, if we want to do that, actually, I need to do this first. So we're going to go ahead and keep this because I need to steal this code. So we're going to do that. So if int key of 0 is equal to 8, which is our backspace, then we want to, well, mm. and typed index is greater than 0. We're going to need both of those things. Um, so we're going to say typed index, nope, can't do that yet. Um, so I can't assume that the labels that I'm going to spawn are all always going to be one letters or one letter long. They could, in theory, be entire words for each label. So, for example, I might have um, a group of labels that spell out like, you know, jump the log, and then you would have to type them in sequence. So uh, to get around that, we're going to say we don't want to subtract current index. We don't care about that. We don't. Oh, man. <sighs> yeah, I don't care about that at all. All right, fine. So this needs to. This um, so we don't need to set our current index. We don't really need to refresh our label. Um, anyways, add. Mm. I'm trying to not evaluate a label if I haven't typed in it yet, which is my problem. That's why I initially set the index to negative one. So I could say, hey, if it's negative one, we don't care. Um, but that makes it difficult because... That would be what the first one is. <sighs> okay, so refresh label won't work. So we'll do this. Um, detect backspaced is this. That's fine for now. Indicator dot hide. This seems. I don't think we need that actually. Current index. Oh, that's right. I changed it. Um, so originally, when you typed out the individual characters, you had to backspace all the way. Um, but that doesn't make sense. Why would you do that? Because if you're backspacing, you clearly want to delete everything. So um, I set it up. So that if you hit backspace, you just like clear out the entirety of it. Okay, that's that's fair. That's fine. Um, let's go ahead and get rid of this. And get rid of these. Um, so if we do that, then it'll clear whatever label it is. So I can I have like an is. through how I want to do this. I really should allow you to backspace everything. Yeah, it should probably delete everything. So keep in mind that the label group is basically meant to make individual labels act as one big label. Which means that if you hit backspace, it should probably backspace all of it. 
the main reason for that being that if you type like part of the word and then switch to a different language, uh, it does not work. Uh, but what if it does? Uh, trying to think. Um. I guess that makes sense. Okay. I mm, maybe I should just let it go, so everything always gets checked. I mean, that's all I can think of. What is attack backspace firing? Variables of I dot reset attack. I hmm. not sure how I feel about that. So I guess it's just this. But like everything. Um and then on attack completed, we want to say typed index plus plus uh, if typed index is greater than or equal to labels dot count say um, attack complete this okay I think that's pretty much all I needed to do really <laughs> Um, God, the system is too massive. So on attack completed, we do want to fire attack completed. Um, so, but do we want to handle backspacing? Skipping. I'm not so sure. Um, combat attack. And do the labels need to know about their groups? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think the group can. I think we can have top down logic like that. The labels shouldn't really care. Um, so. Come back down here. On attack. Skip. Maybe. No. Increments attack damage. Damage amount. Attack damage multiplied by attack combo. Okay. Sorry, I'm just kind of thinking through everything that I've done here. Um, Cause it's a chain, it's a chain of event listeners, basically. The labels fire when they are completed. So the thing that spawned them, which is the combat attack or combat the attack section behavior, is listening for that event and it handles what it needs to do 
when the individual label is complete, but I basically want to move that functionality to combat attack label group. And I think I can change it so that instead of having these unique combat attack label group events, they just basically are wrappers for the first label. Um, that should work. I just want to make sure that I don't do anything stupid in the sense that I don't Like, I don't think we're actually doing much with this label individually. We're not using it for indexing, which is what I would expect normally. Um, but since we're not, then let's see here. I'm thinking. So this is where we're spawning all of our attacks. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to say, when we spawn our label, hmm. So we're going to say if uh, label group is equal to null, then we're going to do this. Else, we'll say, right, so that's th therein lies the problem. Um, all of our individual labels need to basically fill themselves. Well, they need to... They need to they need to know that they're completed, um, which they will fire an event when that happens. But then they have to also fade out, which is handled here in attack section behavior. So I can't really just get rid of those events. That is deeply troubling to me. Um, So we're going to go ahead and go to definition here. Uh, my main, oh, sorry, not that. Uh, my main concern here is on attack complete, where we mark is attacking to be false. That seems like it could have ramifications. So if not is attacking, okay, never mind, never mind, never mind, never mind, never mind. Never mind. Okay, I had a comment there and I didn't even bother looking. Um, So I'm also going to go ahead and say uh, it's true if an attack label is going to be typed. Okay. So that probably means that it could be okay. Um, we would still spawn our labels, but we would need to determine what to do if, I don't know, it should handle if they're not all typed. That should be fine. Um, I guess we don't really care, really. All all the attack group is going to do is determine, well, if the, the labels can be typed in a specific order. So that actually simplifies things a lot for us. Um, that means I can come back down to here 
and uh, we can just do this if else check. Um, current attack label, that does get a little awkward. Um, so we're going to kind of cheat a bit, and we're going to use the first label in a combat attack label group as the label we're associating with here. Oh, except actually I bet that won't work because of this. So, um, oh, well, that's not being good. Pause. Um, what we really want is attack again on attack backspace on attack complete. That. So, except no, that's also fine. All right, cool. Um, that's really simple, except, right, we need to handle the current attack stuff when he is attacking. So, we're going to need to have a, an event flyer, I think, that points to that label that's currently being set, but then after that we'll be fine. So... Um, we're going to come back here to group, and we're going to say attack began, it will take a label. Attack complete will also take a label, and we don't care about skipped or backspace. No, we care about backspace, but we don't care about, we might care about skipped too. So we do want, we want all of these things basically. Um, and this is just going to be, it's always going to be labels of zero. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and say these are basically wrappers for combat attack labels events. Um, these events will always use the first label. That will not work, actually. No, 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 no. Um, I think the... Nope. Yeah, so... They will individually pass the correct label based on the index that we're currently at. Um, okay. Um, from there... We do need to fire events. So we're going to say else um, if current attack is equal to null, do I need to do that? Should be fine. Um, I'm thinking real quick how I want to handle this. Um, if not is attacking So, yeah, I guess otherwise we're basically just going to say else um, label group dot check input 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 stream. Pretty much that's all we're going to do. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and come back over to here. That's going to check our input on it, which should work. And I think everything will more or less function as we expect it to there. Um, yeah, I might have overcomplicated this, honestly. Uh, so let's go back here to attack section behavior. Um, and all we're going to do is we're going to say up here in our spawn group, we just want to say, and we are spawning. And we are. We're just going to say uh, if label group is not equal to null, say label group dot add label label okay get rid of that and we're gonna make this equal to null I'll do a quick pause we're gonna clean up all of our actions that is all correct for the most part so we're just gonna say if labels over here put you back there okay I'm pretty sure that can be fixed if I'm wrong 
Okay. Uh, that, in theory, should work. So let's test that out, I guess. Um, oh, crap. Of course. I completely forgot that I need to set up my clip for this. Let's see. Attach. Right. <laughs> okay, uh, so give this time to compile real quick. We need to edit our tax section clip because we can't exactly assign that value if we don't have a field to assign it with. Well, uh, and then we're going to need to say serialized field tooltip, even though I know it won't do anything. Protected. Exposed reference of combat attack label group. I'm going to call this label group is equal to blah, blah, blah. And we're going to say group correspond labels to. And this be evaluated. I guess. All right, then down here, uh, I'm going to go ahead and clean up my code a little bit here. Oh, that's stupid of me. Why did I do it that way? Well, it's fine. I'll just do that the way that I can. Um, so we're going to go ahead and say, I exposed property table resolver is equal to graph. Over, do, do, do. Um, I'm just going to poke this in for all of these graph.get resolvers. It doesn't make sense to get it once. No reason to have to get it multiple times. Uh, let's see. Label prefab. We're going to say behavior dot label group is equal to label group dot resolve. Paste in our resolver. And let's paste in our resolver here as well. Okay, so that probably actually increased efficiency a little bit because uh, I'm not constantly getting the resolver. Um, and I think that puts it where I need to be. Uh, let's make sure I don't have a custom inspector here. Uh, of course I do. Of course I do. Let's go ahead and copy that. Call this label group as well. And this as well. And of course I'm going to do that for all of them because I really want to have more modern coding standards. Or rather, more in line with what I code like now. Uh, I hate it when I do that. Okay. I like to initialize all of my null fields, or, or all of my object reference fields with null now. Um, okay, so we're going to go ahead and come up to here. Paste that. We're going to call this label group. Label group is equal to that. And I'm going to come back over here. Prefab, label group, okay, and that should set everything up. Um, so let's go ahead and let that compile. Take a quick drink. Ah. And I think we can try to give this a quick test once I have this. It, the animation should work. Um, it'll be a little rocky, but uh, I think we can at least get all the way through to the end. So let's let that finish compiling, and then things should basically be functional. All right. So let's go ahead, and we want to grab our segment group right scrub to our attack point right about here and now we need to start uh, spawning these things so this is going to be our attack seriously there we go attack label group and that's fine uh, okay so we're going to come down to here i'm going to select my clip here nice we have our label group so i can put that here
here. Um, that is all I really care about. We don't need to worry about anything else for now. I... You know, I don't actually... Call this. Um, no, it's it's single. Um, yeah. Okay. So it's going to be a little awkward because um, I basically need multiple clips here. So we have this. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this. Come here, go to your combat. We're going to come back to here. Uh, this is going to be you. Oh, and I need to assign this, of course. Star S. Let's go ahead and duplicate that. Get rid of this combat label. We're going to have this one be to you. Get our combat label updated to be you. Something like that. Oh, and I probably should just go ahead and move this underneath it. And this will be this. Okay. Uh, this is going to be our U. Pass that in there. Make sure that these are correct. Good. Pretty much everything else is what I would expect. Set our target. Are you serious? Like, no, that makes sense. There's a lot of transform gains here. Good. And okay. Let's duplicate this again. Go to your combat. This is P. Okay, so we're looking at probably something right about here. They're starting to get a little wonky, and I probably need to rotate them a bit. But that's fine for now. Assign this our P. Alright. Uh, next, we need duplicate this. Same thing. I should probably just go ahead no. Okay. And X. Okay. Of course you did. Started to scale it. Um, so our L should probably be somewhere around right about there. E should probably be somewhere right about here. And then X should be somewhere around about here-ish. I should probably move them closer. a little bit better overall. There we are. Cool. So that's kind of what it would look like. Suplex! So probably what we would do is we would have S-U-P-L-E-X fade in in sequence. Um, so real quick, this is the L. We're going to need to assign L and L. What are you doing, cat? Yeah. 
cats, I see. Sorry, the cat's one. cat wants attention. Um, we're going to go ahead and duplicate this. This is our B. Um, this is going to use the first one to start, so we want it to be a damage amount of one. All the other ones are going to be zero. Um, let's see. I think that five should be plenty of time for us to do this. I think that five seconds would be enough to type out suplex. Um, but I don't really have much. All right, so I'm going to... We're going to shorten these up, so we want S to spawn right away. We want this to spawn probably about half a second later. So we're basically going to be working in 30 frame intervals. Um, so we're going to come over here. Um, 20 and 50, which leaves, what, that last one is six, is one second long. That's not a lot of time. Um, probably this needs to be extended. So let's set our duration here to, oh yeah, 3.5 seconds. That is not long enough. Um, let's make this five seconds total. Um, so we needed to add 1.5, so 4.5. Uh, what was that? Four. 3.5. That's more reasonable, I feel. Mostly because by the time we get to the last one, even though you only have 2.5 seconds to type it, um, you will have typed probably S-U-P-L-E-X at that point. So, or, well, S-U-P-L-E at that point. So it, it should be fine. Um, yeah, I'm going to say that that's fine. But I, I, we might have to extend that a little bit longer. But if we do, that's not a problem thing about clips is that we can kind of arbitrarily size them so that's kind of what that will look like and we can we can test it out i guess oh uh, let's make sure that we assign the label group which we did cool so i'm going to get rid of these labels and we can try this real quick i'm 100 sure that it'll go 100 percent the way we want but let's try it. All right. Segment two left. And if we go right, we want to go to segment two. Attack left, attack right. OK. So let's give this a shot. We should be able to just uh, load it as we see fit. Oh, right. Should be good. I think anyway. Let's go ahead and turn all of our defaults on. Okay. Let's give it a shot. Okay. I'll be amazed if this works. <laughs> I really will be. I will be incredibly happy if it does. Because um, I believe we can get through the first stage completely. Um, and then I think we can at the very least get through those that second stage to the right. I want to see if it types out correctly. Okay. So we don't have audio right now, uh, which makes sense. That was a really long wait. Okay, um, so we're going to go into battle. We want to go... Attack the troll. Boosh. Okay. So that's that. Go. Okay. 
that's it getting mad because it's entering its second phase. Got to really work on the timings for those things. Um, we're going to battle again. We should be in phase two now. Oh. Wait, wait, wait. Nope, I, I, I screwed that up. That was my fault. Because that's still playing segment one. It's not. Um, let me think, let me think, let me think. Uh, crud. Crud, 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 crud. Hold on, hold on, transitions. Uh, when do you play a transition? Don't need to read it. Don't. Control stance behavior. It's definitely not that. Um, I'm just gonna grab this here so I can see what's going on. Segment one, segment one, two, segment two. Um, hmm. I. Yeah, that's definitely the get mad and play particle systems one. Um, maybe I just set it up so that I have to play that? That's odd because I could have sworn. Well, no, that, that makes sense. Okay, so we'll have to do it a couple of times. Um, it's just odd because I thought that it transitioned after the. I, I thought that it played that steam effect only when it transitioned from phase one to phase two. And there might be something weird here. Um, let's go into battle again real quick. Let's say. Let's we'll just play until basically. Now it's getting mad. Which I think it's just going to do every time now. Uh, so let's go into battle again. Okay, it should basically do the same thing. I have no idea why the wrong letters are being highlighted, but that is quite distressing. Okay, we get our anger again. time I think we'll get the the new ones okay okay that time it didn't transition what the f this is the right this is ah oh, you suck all right um I have to have something um, let's step through real quick. So segment one, segment two is completed. Um, segment two, which does not really do anything for me. Set animation, clip, model animation, no combat, particle damage. Right, okay. So I guess we want that to be... Maybe our health ranges aren't actually being taken into account. Um, if that's the case, then let's go ahead and let's lower this to four. We'll set that four to two, I guess. Um, okay, and from there, we are going to Go ahead and open up control combat system, which actually we need to open up just combat system. Okay. Uh, phases, find all references. Phases, not active. Start real time text based action. Phases, active phase. Where do we set you? We don't. Okay. Um, active phase. So before. Before we do start real-time text-based action, I think active phase should be evaluated, which means, uh, let's see, initialize health phase, let's see, active phase.
is I'm going to go ahead and copy this. On intro, on action selected, uh, item selected. I need to look for the help for the enemy. Go to modify references. I'm going to do this. Else. Active things. So we're going to say for int i equals zero, i is less than phases dot warning i plus plus we're gonna say if uh, phases dot i'm sorry phases of i dot health range dot x is less than uh, sorry is greater than um, enemy So if that's the case, and phases of i dot health range dot y is less than enemy HP. So if that's the case, then we're going to say active index or active phase is equal to i, and then we're going to break. Stop it! Just i. So let's try that. Hmm. I pr that probably means that I should move. Well, no, that would make sense. Um, but I, I might need a better way, a better method of determining if a transition cutscene should play. Because I'm not doing that from the troll combat system, or from the combat system directly. Instead, I'm doing it from a timeline clip, which is... <sighs> it's understandable why I did that, but I don't know if that's the best thing for it. So let's go ahead and do this. Um, this... Oh, shoot. Nope. It won't. I messed up already. I didn't say greater than or equal to. And that one line or that one character means it has to completely recompile before we can test this. And in all honesty, I, I probably should just make it be something like um, if it's greater than, if it's less than or equal to its max and greater than or equal to its uh, min, then we want to do that instead of being like less than or equal to its max and then just greater than its min. Uh, in any case, so this, this should uh, let us actually swap phases um, as we see fit. Also, I now that I'm thinking about it, I bet the reason that I, I'm doing it through clips instead of through a centralized area like the combat manager is so that I have greater flexibility when it comes to handling these transitions. It would allow me to have specific transitions for specific enemies in specific fights as opposed to always enforcing a rigid way of evaluating that. Because I could see using special items on special and are on specific enemies and that would cause a specific phase change. So that's actually I can almost guarantee Okay, so we're going to stomp on his face, please don't get mad, and then we get our second battle phase, yes, okay, oh, you are totally incorrect for your size. Oh no, oh no, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Mm -mm -mm. Nope, 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 no, nope, 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 nope. You scaled all wrong, aren't you? No. 
How are you so big? One of you has to be scaled incorrectly. One of you has to be. I don't know which one, but one of you is. Wait, is it like a parent? What the frig? Attack point. Attack label. What is happening here? Uh, something is... This is not the first time this has happened. This is usually because of some mistake on my part for setting up the combat. Um, let me double check things. So segment one is functional. All static, trade in duration. Let's see here. This is gonna get really rough. So these are pretty much set up the right way, as we'd expect. Wait, are you counter scaled? Is that why it's like that? Nope, cool. So something else is doing that. Um, let's go ahead and go over here to segment two right. Give me a second here. We're going to add a text quest combat playable track. We're going to add a static time bar clip. Do that. Um, you. Let's set you to all static. Uh, let's not parent you to spawn, I guess. And. Um, Seems to be about it. The only difference here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and grab this, and probably I need to rotate it 180 degrees. No, actually, I think that's correct. But let's try that again. I'm a little miffed at that. Um, yeah, so I do need to actually. Um, I know that there was a stupid reason for it doing that, and now I can't remember that, and it makes me very nervous. Okay, so let's try this again. That really is disconcerting to me. Something in its parentage is completely borked. Um, okay, we're going to battle. My control. Mad. Oh, yeah. Oh, it completed it. Okay. So that almost worked. Um, let's go to segment three, right, real quick. I believe these need to be set to multiple. Except that can't be right. Um, attack area, no, it's, it's single. Um, fail on interaction. Oh, wait, hold on. Do I have parameters for this? Nope. Okay, there's totally a thing here, though. Hmm. Um, rather unfortunate. Let's 
So it, it, I mean, it started kind of working. Kind of. Check the combat announcements. Well, I'm, I don't want to call it quits here. Um, We're going to let it play out, because it seems to spawn the labels correctly. But I get the feeling that it's not exactly doing what I want here. Um, I'm a little concerned that it's skipping to the end, but I don't think it's actually set up to do that. I think it, if you complete an attack, it shouldn't skip to the end. It should just... Done. Well, actually, hold on. Before we start playing, let me double check something. Okay, so that's definitely part. Of that that was probably actually part of the problem. So this needs to be there. Okay. So let's go ahead and. Try this again. Okay, so we're going to go into battle. That said, um, simply playing this, like actually getting to play the combat system, uh, is enough to reassure me that this actually is much more fun <laughs> than the uh, current combat system. So I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, let me go over here. Let me go right this time. Oh, dear. What happened? Did all of the labels like spawn over here? They did for some reason. That's super odd. Um, please don't break. Okay. Let's figure out why. why? Oh, oh, I know what happened there. Whoopsie daisy. Gotta unexpose these properties. Yep. <sighs> okay. As a warning, whenever you duplicate clips, um, exposed property references keep their references and they will update appropriately, or rather inappropriately, which is very vexing. So I have to unexpose them all or I can come back and reassign them. So it's not that we were skipping attacks, it's that I only saw the two. Okay, so we have S, U, P, L, E, X. Let's try this uh, one more time then, because I would like to get a screenshot. Because I think it's cool. Also, I'm just super excited you know, to get a suplex in my game. Who doesn't like suplexes? They are easily one of the coolest moves that you can pull in combat. Okay. Face. Gets mad. Okay. 
I got my screenshots. Um, we're probably going to call it a day there because I have uh, I have to get going. Actually, I have dinner plans. Um, but also, I want to take a picture, but I don't have to go hit that. Screenshots. Mwah! Beautiful. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. It's going to be so fun. Uh, I can't wait to do the suplex animation. Uh, for as much as I, you know, gripe about having to do all this animation work, there are, there are times where I'm just grinning ear to ear uh, working on these things. Uh, okay. So that's a pretty good place to stop for the night. Um, I don't really have any announcements besides... So Indie PopCon is next week. Um, it's from the 7th through the 9th. Um, so I will definitely not be streaming next Tuesday or Saturday, or no, I'm sorry, next Thursday or Saturday. I'm pretty sure that I'm not going to be streaming on Tuesday as well, just because I'm probably going to be in animation grind work mode. So you'll see a lot of, you'll, you'll get some updates from me on the discord probably, but for the most part, it's probably going to be me kind of like hunkering down and really trying to get this combat system finished up. Um, so that I can test it at Indie PopCon. Um, and yeah, so just keep your ear to the ground. So I might not stream next Tuesday, but I'm definitely not streaming next t uh, Thursday or Saturday because I'll be at PopCon slash setting up for PopCon on Thursday night. Um, so that is a pretty good place to stop for the night. So as always, I want to thank you all very much for watching, and I will see you all next time.